money. I think I remembered everything. I will tell. Um, what a great morning. Uh, early morning, not so much, but the rain stopped, the wind has died down.
scripture says, I chose you and appointed you, says the Lord, that you should go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Our service begins on page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Come as the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, so you should see our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The collect appointed for this 19th Sunday after Pentecost is found on page 384. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one, one night imparts knowledge to another. another. Although they have no words or language, 
and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all lands. And their message to the ends of the world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, more than fine gold. Sweeter, Sweeter far than honey, than, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then, then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent and of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, Lord my strength and my Redeemer. And we'll pray together. Gracious Creator of heaven and earth, your word has come among us as the true Son of righteousness, and the good news of his birth has gone out to the ends of the world. Open our eyes to the light of your law, that we may be purified from sin and serve you without reproach for the sake of Jesus Christ, our life and our life.
But the tenant seized his slaves and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants. Who will give him the produce at the harvest time? Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is what the Lord, this is the Lord the Lord's doing. And is it amazing in our eyes? Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, and the other will be crushed if it falls on them. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because he was regarded as a prophet. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, as we once again begin a change of seasons, many would frown upon the colder weather to come and what winter brings to us. Lord, help us to see this season of sleep before the great rebirth as a time to reaffirm our faith. Help us to be thankful for what you have given us and turn our thoughts and prayers to those who have no home in which to sleep, no clothes to keep them warm, no food to sustain their health or families to love and care for. Lord, we would ask that your Holy Spirit come and fill us with the compassion, love, and energy that we need to go out and help the less fortunate. We ask this all in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now at the 9 o'clock service, I started out with all good intentions of following the homily that I had written this week. And I, I found myself quickly falling into a rabbit hole which took me to a place that I really didn't want to be in, but luckily they were patient. And we regained things just in time for my closing prayer. Over the last few weeks, um, we have found our prayers shifting from ourselves and our own communities <laughs> We're brothers and sisters, not only across our country, but around the world. Yesterday morning, I got up with some excitement, knowing that I had a wedding to perform in the afternoon, filled with the joy and happiness of doing a wedding rather than a funeral. I was excited. And at that moment, I made the mistake of turning on the television and seeing that war had broken out in Israel. Now, I realize that this war that's taking place right now has been going on for 
<clears throat> thousands of years. And yet, I can't help but pray for peace. Knowing, as I do, that the scripture tells us that it's a schoolyard fight. Both are children of Abraham. And one constantly thinks that they're better than the other. And unfortunately, or fortunately, we also are children of Abraham. So we are in the middle, detached. We're like the country cousins that moved away. So even though we can see both sides of this schoolyard fistfight, it's not up to us to judge. It's not up to us to pick sides and say who is right and who is wrong, who crossed the line first, who fired the first shot. But what we do need to do is pray for peace. And this is where the rabbit hole turned into a war this morning in St. George's. Because for so long we have prayed for people who have seen tragedy this season of Pentecost. People who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, their family members. In natural disasters, the likes of which we have no written history of unless we go back to the book of Genesis. Floods that covered the earth, days that rained fire, plagues of locusts, which I'm sure that any farmer in the prairies this summer could tell you is a real thing. The crops that they sowed in the spring with such hope and anticipation of being bountiful that didn't die in the drought were taken by grasshoppers. We could get depressed and say the world is coming to an end and run around like chicken little. But as faithful Christians, we know that that's not the case. We know that God is a loving and forgiving God. We know that Jesus spent his entire life preaching love and hope and peace and compassion. So why would our world come to an end like this with so many in pain, <coughs> so many suffering, so many clinging to their last hope? Sometimes I wonder if the story that we get, if the story we're being told is only one tiny sliver of the entire picture. <coughs> and I fear in many of these cases that is the case. We only see the Israelis firing rockets. We only see the Palestinians coming through closed fence. But that story runs so deep that 7,000 miles away, it's hard for us to pass judgment. The big picture, the whole picture that we need to consider is, is as we dig through the allegory of this gospel, because this is a beautiful gospel, but it's like an onion or an artichoke. What's on the surface is a story. The meaning, we have to peel away the layers to find. And that's the nature of allegory. Without a sense of imagination, it's hard to see what's at its root. And if 15 of us were to read that gospel and think about that gospel, we would come up with 15 different ideas or perspectives. That's one of the wonderful things about allegory. But when it comes
us right down to it, but we need to realize and how we can use this gospel to focus on what's taking place in our world, in our society, in our communities now, is that we are the tenants. God is the landowner. We live in the vineyard. And as we go back through the other scriptures, we can say, we reap what we sow. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. One of the great commandments, love thy neighbor as thyself. So, so even though the thought of what's taking place in our world today can turn into a rabbit hole that has so many different branches and paths that we can all come to different conclusions from the same original story, the story that's buried in today's gospel ties that all together. The products of a well-lived life, a well-spent life, not necessarily a godly life, but a good life, are not ours to harvest, but God's to give. We don't own this vineyard. We don't own this garden that we live in. We're stewards. We're parts of it. We're created by God to tend it. And when he comes back, and he will come back, he will either cast us out of the city or embrace us for tending it as he wanted us to. So it doesn't matter whether we're Israelis or Palestinians or Christians. What matters is the love that we share, not the fights that we pick. We can choose to go out of our way to be closed-minded, to treat others in no way the way we want to be treated. Or we can tend the soil and prune the vines. We can share the love, we can share the hope, we can share our faith. We can share the glories of God and all his promises. Not fighting on the schoolyard, but sitting down at a Thanksgiving table, enjoying a meal. Sharing a smile, feeling blessed to know that everyone we meet on the street is our brother or our sister. God is with us. The Holy Spirit is present with us here today. And if all the people throughout creation were to take a moment to quiet their minds, they would know that the Holy Spirit is present with them. Maybe there would be a little less anger and a little more love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you may be present here with us now in this church, in this community, in our lives. We give you thanks, Lord, for your Son. We give you thanks for sending him to live with us, to be with us, to teach us how to love and how to share. We thank you, Lord, for his sacrifices. We thank you for the promises that he made to the faithful. We thank you for the grace of his body and blood in our lives brought to us through the blessings of the Holy Spirit. We pray that in the days to come we may, we may remain faithful to you in body, mind, and spirit, and so through your Holy Communion we may find eternal life with you. Amen.
Continuing on page 189, join together as we confess the faith of our baptism in the Apostles' Creed. Together we pray. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Spirit and the Lord of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we remain standing, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your presence, we give you thanks on this Thanksgiving Day weekend. We thank you for our families, for our friends, for our loved ones. We thank you, Lord, for the part we play in their lives and the part they play in ours. Lord, as we remember those who surround us in our community, we remember those who suffer in body, mind, spirit. We pray that they may find healing in your presence and comfort, and a peace that only you can provide. Lord, as we gather our hearts and minds in prayer, we remember our brothers and sisters throughout creation who mourn loss, whether it be from natural disaster, from wildfire, from war. We pray for every heart that grieves, Lord. We pray for every spirit that has joined you. We pray for the families that begin again. That you would give them the strength, the purpose. the will to go on and rebuild their lives. Lord, we pray for all the first responders in our communities that work tirelessly around the clock to keep us safe, to respond to our issues, who put their lives before ours. We pray that you would give them the resolve to do what needs to be done. Keep them safe and let them return home to their families when time allows. Lord, we pray for one another. That you may stay strong in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. So that on the day that you return, we will be ready for you. And you will greet us as the children of your creation. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Together we pray. <coughs> Most merciful God. God. We confess, we confess that we have sinned against you, Father, and Father, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. We confess that we have sinned against you, Father, and 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 Father
Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. So with you. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should pray. 
praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. And when we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom, and through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give you thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly give you praise. And in the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, and to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life evermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Recalling his death and proclaiming his resurrection and looking again for his coming in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body, one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 211. Praying together as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The breaking of the bread when you said is number two. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Spirit shine.
Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and, and, and if you're not retired, you have a wonderful day off tomorrow. And, uh, and we'll pray for the sun later in the day, so that we can always have some time that we haven't got to worry about getting damp if we walk over to the earth. Um, I believe that's it. So, let us stand for the prayer after communion and the doctor's home. Almighty God, may we who have been strengthened by this Eucharist remain in your steadfast love and show in our lives the saving mystery that we celebrate. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Whose power, power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory, Glory to God, God from generation to generation. To generation. In, in the, the church, church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he comfort you in times of sorrow. May he laugh with you in times of joy. And as you leave here today, remember his love for you and be thankful. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 305 in the blue.